Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at the biggest and baddest folding knives that you can get your hands on. Let's check them out. So the folders we're talking about today are the kind of things that give you just this fistful of metal. When you pick it up, you just want to say, heck yeah. And we have to be honest, this video is kind of inspired by cold steel. Uh, <laughs> cold steel as evidenced by this Espada XL right here, does large and over the top knives like just about nobody else out there. Uh, this particular guy right here comes in uh, about 168, when which you consider all the, uh, all the kit you're getting for it is actually not that bad. The blade itself, seven and a half inches long, Aus 10 stainless steel, it's got a nice stone washed finish going on. You've got G10 for the handles, just a little bit of texture there for some grip. And of course, Cold Steel's famous and very strong, famously very strong triad lock. Looks like a lockback, but it's stronger under the hood, just rock solid and stable. Now, despite the almost, let's be honest, comically large nature of this knife, it's actually a fairly well thought out and fairly useful blade overall. I mean, it actually does fit in the pocket. Here's a fold the guy up, definitely a two-handed closer for sure. It's a lot. You're not going to be able to carry much else in your front pockets, uh, but at least on my, uh, my standard jeans, it does fit. You do have a decent bit of handle sticking up out the back, so you, know, you wouldn't want a, a deep carry pocket clip on this guy. And then you've got your ambidextrous thumb plate here right near the back of the spine. That'll actually work as a pocket deployer. So this giant knife will be fully deployed as long as you angle it to catch the hem of your pocket just as soon as you pull it. And it's one of those things that certainly puts a smile on my face, that's for sure. You've also got two handholds on this. You've got a standard grip position. You've got actually maybe more than that. You've got a little bit of choke up space around the Ricasso, but you can actually also choke back. That's going to point the, uh, the front of the blade kind of very intuitively. You can even probably pull off some light machete tasks with this. I wouldn't go necessarily uh, chopping wood all day long with it, but you could take care of some grasses and stuff around the, uh, around the yard if you wanted to, or you can just feel awesome when you pull that guy out. Now I will show a couple other cold steels here in a second, um, but when I think of, of the Espada XL, the, the word I mentioned earlier is kind of comically large, and I do mean that in a good way. And there's one other knife I always think of when the phrase comically large comes into mind, and that is the Openel number 13. Very different vibe, obviously, from the Espada XL. Obviously very, a very old school vibe, but it's even bigger than the Cold Steel. It's a little bit more affordable too. These come in at uh, just 99 bucks right now, and it's just a classic open L type of construction, just sized up. You got your Sandvik 12C27 blade, and it comes in just shy of nine inches. Same old clip point with the, uh, the full flat grind as the smaller knives, just sized up for, uh, for good fun. The handles themselves are nice and comfortable. You've got that classic beech wood construction with no, uh, no hot spots around it because it is just, you know, the slot for the knife is sawed out of one side. You don't have two sides connected together. You can choke back, do a little bit of light grass work. Uh, but I think where this knife would really shine, backyard barbecue sets, stuff like that. You've even got that locking ring on there still, which will hold the blade in the closed and the open position. And really, this knife is just about good fun and it, it's yeah it puts a smile on your face and that's kind of what we're going for with a lot of the knives here today there are going to be some things that are very purpose driven that are going to be very useful but bottom line if none if one of these knives if you pull it out of your pocket and it doesn't make you smile there's no way it's making it on this list today um, so back to cold steel we'll talk about them a second more uh, if you like this espada xl but it is too much also check out their XL Voyager. Very similar in terms of its styling, uh, but a little bit smaller. This is a five and a half inch blade. This is also one of the more affordable big bad folders that you can get nowadays. This guy comes in about 72 bucks, not too bad. Again, Aus 10 blade, full flat grind here with that stone washed finish. Similar handle shape, just sized down, and you've got a, uh, a Grivex handle, so it's injection molded. Still got the triad lock, Still have a similar style to the pocket clip where it's, uh, it sticks enough up out of the, uh, of the pocket so you can grab onto it more easily. Dual thumb studs, no ambidextrous plate on this guy, so you're not going to be pocket deploying this out so quickly. 
but still a very impressive knife. The funny thing about something like the Voyager is it actually makes some of Cold Steel's more big bad knives, uh, they've got a bunch of them, but it makes some of them, which to any other company would be the biggest, most massive thing in their lineup, makes them feel kind of small by comparison. And case in point is the Formax model. Four inch blade, big, beefy, made out of S35VN. Uh, this premium version that is, there is a, uh, a more affordable version with AUS 10, uh, but the premium guy comes in about 425 right now. So a bit pricey for sure, but it is pretty awesome. And yeah, like I've never picked up this Formax before until I picked it up off of this table and thought it was kind of small. What's that tell you? <laughs> There's something fun about that. But this is still a massive knife, uh, especially if you don't have these points of comparison next to it. Uh, four inches, nice broad drop point, like I said. G10 on the handles on this guy, triad lock again, multiple hand positions again. You got your main gorilla grip here. You can choke up onto the finger choil area for some finer control if you need to. And again, not that I'd be chopping wood all day long, but the way the handle's designed, it's almost like it wants you to go chopping with it. You have a little less reach than the Espada XL, but it's still going to be a phenomenal big bad folder. All right, next up, we're gonna get into some of the, uh, the, the big titanium frame lock flippers, which is one of the uh, most prolific genres of knives out there today. And you see that in these big bad folders as well. And we're gonna start with what I like to call the one pound flipper, because this does come in just over 16 ounces. This is the Half Breed Blades Large Bush Flipper. Uh, and this is actually a liner lock, not a frame lock, but the handle themsel handles themselves are titanium in this case. Blade Steel S35VN, just over four inches, nice broad profile. We've got a hollow grind on this knife. So it has some similarities actually to that Formax, but the Formax has a flat grind, but similar length, similar steel. You actually get a little bit more edge on the Formax, even though the blade length is technically a skosh shorter. You do get a little more thickness though on the blade stock. Uh, we're coming in uh, just under a quarter inch. It's about 0.21 here. And as you can see, nice, thick, massive slabs of, of titanium as well. Definitely fills the hand quite nicely. You've got a lot there to hold on to for sure. Again, you've got a finger choil there if you do want to choke up and you got some space to choke back. This is a liner lock though. I, I wouldn't really recommend some uh, aggressive chopping so much with this knife. I, I, I just laugh whenever I think about that concept. You do have some, uh, some divots here in the titanium that does double duty. You can use this uh, being a large bush flipper, they kind of, they, they at least market this as being used outdoors on occasion. You could use this as a bearing block for a bow drill fire, but it also actually creates a nice spot for my middle finger as I'm gripping the knife. It's a nice index point, a little bit of extra traction as well. Next up is from Artisan Cutlery. This is the Proponent designed by Dirk Pinkerton. It's actually one of the very few knives on this table today that has a, a blade that's underneath four inches long but it's so massive in all the other directions that you know, it still, still qualifies in our mind. It's about 3.85, so it's almost at that four inch mark, and these large versions come in about 212 right now. Similar story here with the steel, we've got S35VN, big, broad, angular, kind of reverse Tonto or Warren Cliff shape going on. We've also got titanium construction, frame lock flipper, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. A few different opening methods though, beyond just the flipping action is quite nice. You've got a lot of mass in the blade rotating around the, uh, the ball bearings in the pivot. has a nice satisfying feel. But in addition to that, you could use these oversized thumb studs, no problem. You can also thumb open it using the fuller on that blade, starting there and rotating up as you go around. So there's a few different options for the, uh, the fidget minded out there. And when it comes to a big fidgety folder, this has definitely got a lot going for it, for sure. In addition to being able to put in some really powerful cuts. Well, we're looking at knives kind of in this style. We've got to talk about one of the kind of marquee makers of this style of knife, and that's Andre de Villiers with his ADV Battle Cleaver. This is one of the more expensive knives on the table. Actually, this is probably gonna work out to be the most expensive knife on the table right now, coming in about $1,200 right now. Quite expensive, but this is, uh, you are paying for custom level fit and finish here. Blade, M390 in this case, big four inch cleaver. Compound grinds with a recurve section here at the back. Definitely very distinctive and very signature look for ADV. The handles are titanium. It's got his frag pattern on there. Frame lock on the back. 
Got a milled titanium pocket clip here with one of the signature uh, elements that you see on some ADVs, and that is that rotating cylinder there at the pinch point. Makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of the pocket. Now, just like that artisan, we can use the uh, fuller there to do a thumb open, but you really wanna flip that big M390 blade out. Very satisfying. All blacked out in this version, but he does all kinds of different and cool variations of this knife. So as always, just keep a lookout for cool ones. All right, so all the knives we've looked at so far certainly have their uses, but a lot of them are, are about being big just for the sake of it. And I like that. There's something really fun about that. Uh, the next few knives though, aren't gonna be quite as large with one exception, but they're a little bit more intentionally geared towards specific tactical uses either uh, in the line of duty or for self-defense, that sort of thing. Big bad folders certainly have their place in that line of work as well. And we're gonna start out with the Spyderco Yojumbo, which is the larger version of the Yojimbo designed by Michael Janich. Fantastic self-defense and close quarters knife, time proven uh, at this point, certainly. It's just a bigger version that has just recently come out. He's coming about 168 right now. They're made in America. We've got a big four inch blade of S30V, G10 handles and Spyderco's compression lock there on the back. Let's you keep your fingers out of the path of the blade when opening and closing. And you can do some of that flick open and closed as well. Or you can use that ambidextrous thumb hole in classic Spyderco fashion. We've got a hollow grind on this knife and they do that, uh, they say for a couple reasons. One, it gives them a very acute tip and it also gives a lot more spine thickness further out the blade than if they had done something like a full flat grind, which you tend to see a lot on Spyderco designs. This way they get a bit more strength there, but you still have that fine tip for piercing. Really nice, kind of like that Espada from earlier, only at a much you know, smaller scale. Because of this Warncliffe shape also, the tip is going to point very naturally when you, uh, when you hold it forward. And it's also gonna be another good powerful cutter thanks to that fully straight edge with this Warncliffe shape, really ready to shear through some materials. All right, next up we come to Topps knives, but unlike most Topps knives, this is not made in America. Uh, this is actually a collaboration with Fox and their FKMD tactical division. So this is made in Italy, but this is the Magnum folding knife, which is the bigger brother to the Thunderhawk series of folders, which themselves are very large with blades just under four inches, but this guy comes in at about 4.5. Price is very similar to that Spyderco. We're at just under 168 right now. Uh, four and a half inches, like I said, you've got an N690 steel in this case, black coated. And on the handles, you've got a liner lock and G10 on either side. And you've got that open backed construction, helps keep it clean very easily. And then we take a look here on the front side, due to these cutouts in the G10, it operates in a similar way, similar way at least in terms of how you hold the knife, to that half breed from before. Those slots provide a nice positive place for your fingertips to rest, provide some good retention, helps you index the knife, even if you don't have, uh, have eyes on it as you're holding it. And it's just one of those things also that gives you more surface area and therefore more grip. Pocket clip on this guy is tipped down, but it is reversible. You can use it on either side. You've also got uh, in a nod to the hard use mission of this knife, you've got no ball bearings in this pivot. You've got brass washers, so you have a more deliberate, but a very smooth opening system, and it's very stable when open as well. Last but not least, I forgot to mention, we've got the Tonto version here, but Drop Point is also available. All right, next two knives, we're gonna come to kind of some hard use tactical crossbar locking knives, and that's the SOG Seal XR and the newly reintroduced Benchmade Adamas series, which are kind of pocket tanks in terms of what they present from a user standpoint. And again, I, I do mean that in a good way, but on this table, they're, they don't feel like the largest knives out there. They're a little bit smaller by comparison. Just makes me laugh. Uh, the SOG Seal XR, made in America fully these days, comes in about 170, blade just under four inches of S35 VN, and you've got a shape that really echoes kind of the classic SOG Seal buoys that they are very well known for, very closely identified with. They're ground very nicely. You've got that coating on there to uh, keep reflections down. You've got an, in an injection molded handle on this guy, but you've got a nice broad metal backspacer here to give it a good anchor as well as some dual inset liners too. Now, one word about the jimping on this knife, it does run pretty much from midway on the spine of the blade all the way back to the end and then back up through the finger guard. 
It's a little bit less comfortable in bare hands, but it's not abnormally so, or it's, or it's not uh, astronomically uncomfortable. But I would say that this knife, it really shines when you're wearing gloves and those jimping, uh, those sections of jimping are broad enough that even when with those gloves on, you're gonna have some positive traction. The crossbar lock on this knife provides a lot of good opening options here as well. You can do just the classic wrist flick. You can single thumb open with the ambidextrous cutout there, or just hit that flipper and that'll send it right out and be ready to go. As for the new versions of the Adamus, it's a little bit slimmed down from the older versions, which come to think of it, maybe the older version would fit in this video even better. Um, but at the expense of this new version, which I think is even better for use. It's slimmed down a little bit, but still a very ruggedly built knife. The blade is crew wear coming in about 3.8 inches. So a really nice steel for a hard use knife because you have a lot of toughness in addition to the edge retention. Now we don't have a flipper on this knife, but we still do have a nice finger guard. In fact, both of these two knives are gonna do very well at protecting your fingers from sliding forward under heavy strain. Handles here are G10. This is the OD green with coyote blade coloring, but we've also got a black with a gray coating. There's also automatic versions of this knife, but this guy is all manual with that axis lock. Same deal kind of as that SOG, except you don't have the flipper. You do have thumb studs, so you can open it deliberately or you can flick it open. And then you've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip, which makes this knife completely ambidextrous as well. If you don't wanna carry it in the pocket, there's also a nice belt sheet that they include with this guy. All right, next up is the Knight Elements Kukri. Uh, this is another knife made by Fox in Maniago, Italy uh, for Jason Knight with his new brand right here. But we've got a very signature looking Jason Knight Kukri profile, N690 steel again, just over four inches. There's a few different versions right now, but they all come with this steel and they come with either a G10 or Micarta front scale and titanium frame lock on the back. This is a flipper as well. We've got ball bearings in this pivot, but we've also got that broad fuller there so we can do that thumb opening like that if we wish. But it flips open quite nicely and we've got a nice full grip, including this nice flare at the end. Now on a traditional kukri, that flare is to aid when you're chopping. It gives you some retention from it slipping forward. On this guy, it's still gonna give you retention, but not so much from the chopping, but any kind of aggressive cuts, especially on a pull cut, that's gonna help and a pull cut really is gonna work very nicely on this blade because of the recurve that's there and the amount of belly in front of it. It's just ready to cut through and really power through a lot of stuff in front of it. We've also got that nice downward pointed tip. Think like I was mentioning on that Espada again at the beginning, that's gonna point very naturally. Next up, we've got uh, another more affordable knife. This is the Steel Will Plague Doctor. Uh, there's two sizes, but this is the larger four inch version coming in about 73 right now. Blade steel here is D2, and it gets its name uh, from kind of that classic uh, old school medieval plague mask interpreted on the blade shape itself. But the D2 is gonna give you a lot of edge retention. You've got a nice full, almost full flat grind for some good slicing characteristics despite having a decently thick blade stock there. Handles are G10. You've got tip up carry from the pocket clip. And again, nice broad handle, plenty there to hold on to even if you do have larger hands. Like the last couple of knives, you do get a nice finger guard there, in this case from the flipper tab itself. Now a word about the flipping action on this knife, this is one uh, without ball bearings. We've got phosphor bronze washers, great for that stability and great for cleanliness, but they don't always flip as cleanly as some ball bearing flippers do. But when it comes to steel will, they have their action tuned in, their flipping action on these non-bearing knives so, so well. Um, in fact, I, th I think, Definitely among the best, if not the best, execution of bronze washer flippers out there today, especially on the, uh, on the mass market production side of things. They just do it exceptionally well. All right, this next knife should be a little bit bigger, uh, and that's because I could only find one of the three and a half inch versions of the Hogue X5, but this does also come in a absolutely awesome four inch version as well. So just pretend this is a little bit bigger in my hands right now. Uh, the three and a half inch version start at about two and a half, or uh, just over 200 bucks. Uh, and the four inch version here, not too much more than that. It's about 221 right now. The blade steel is CPM 154 and they're calling it a Warncliffe, but I think we have to uh, officially classify this blade shape as crazy um, it, because it kind of is. <laughs> There's definitely a lot going on here. 
despite the out there looks, you can certainly get a lot done with this knife. This is gonna be a, a nice, powerful cutter again. Uh, in fact, I may actually prefer to call this a, uh, a modified sheep's foot more readily than I would a Warncliffe. But compound grinds, they're both flat, uh, but you've got a higher flat grind out here near the tip. So if you're uh, slicing through some material or doing some scoring, which this is gonna be really nice at, you'll have a little bit more efficiency. But if you're trying to power through something, you'll have a little bit more strength, a little bit more beef behind the edge on the back section there. The handles are aluminum. We've got a G Mascus, which is a, uh, a patterned G10 inlay on both sides. And we've got Hogue's button lock. The button lock does come with a secondary safety here, and that's gonna hold it uh, locked in the open position. So if you're worried about bumping that lock, perhaps, it does have a, a decent bit of spring pressure behind it, but if you want that peace of mind, you've got that extra safety there. Flips closed quite nicely, almost completely. There's a bit of a, a detent there at the end, and that's because of the way they tune their detents for the flip open. That's some really, really nice, crisp flicking, flipping action, especially considering it is a button lock. Deep carry pocket clip on this side, although because of the angle, you might have a little bit sticking up. The knife is really nicely put together, and if these big bad flippers, big bad folders are about making an impression when you pull them out of the pocket, then this one should definitely be near the top of the list. I think this X5 actually marks a good transition between uh, the more dedicated, tactically inspired stuff and some of the fancier stuff out there. We did take a look at some, uh, some kind of fancier flippers uh, there at the beginning, but got some even more fancy stuff here closer to the end. And the first, another Italian knife, this is the Viper Rhino, which comes in about 178. And as you can see, massive blade going on here. Four and a quarter inches, N690 steel, very distinctive blade shape. We'll probably call that a, a harpoon sheep's foot or something like that due to the shape. Decent amount of belly though. You're gonna be able to pull off some pretty good slices. Nice robust tip thanks to this construction here. And we've got a crown spine leading all the way up to it, which means you're gonna be able to choke up with your finger. It's gonna be nice and comfortable. In fact, for me, my index finger sat right there behind the tip. Feels really nice. Now, while the blade may be more eye-catching, my favorite part about this knife is the handle itself. It's carbon fiber, but it's thick and it's contoured and it is exceedingly comfortable, especially if you were to take that pocket clip off. It's in the way just a little bit for me, but this is almost as comfortable as a sculpted fixed blade because of the way they've shaped it. It is really nicely done. We've got a lockback mid-mounted on this guy with uh, the crowned backspacer is essentially echoing and flowing into that blade. Nice touch, you see something, some things like that a lot with the Italians. And one of the things you see from Viper especially is some of the smoothest lockback operations anywhere on the market. It's not gritty in its travel, it's not jerky, it's just smooth, smooth motion, and it has that nice click there on the end. It's, it's definitely got enough resistance to keep from slipping open unintentionally, but it's not hard to open. It's just silky and delicious. All right, next up, we've got to talk about the CRKT Shock. Massive, massive knife and a massive departure from most of the stuff that you see from CRKT normally. Uh, this guy is quite expensive as well. It comes in about 750 bucks. While it's not uh, as refined feeling as that Viper or, or a couple of the knives we're gonna look at here in a second, they put this knife out as sort of a showcase of their new deadbolt lock, which is this, it's actuated by the button here, which doubles as the pivot. And you can see this thing on the back that looks like the, uh, the switch on your deadbolt on a door. And that has two bars of steel that go through the tang of the knife and it does hold it very secure. Let's it flip open quite nicely too, thanks to the IKBS bearings in the pivot here. And if you're not convinced, uh, they did actually send us this knife to just kind of take out and see what we could do with the lock. And if, if you've seen that video, you know we just did some really dumb stuff with it. We were throwing it at trees, chopping, batoning, uh, made done a little bit of prying with it. And the performance of the knife and the lock didn't degrade at all through all of the just stupid stuff we were doing with it. And it's certainly a massive feeling knife in the hand as well. We've got XHP blade steel here, about four and a quarter. So very similar in length to that tops, but very different in character, as you can see. We've got more thickness on this CRKT and more fidget factor too. For a knife this large, that is quite impressive. The handles, we've got titanium liners, carbon fiber scales, and titanium 
uh, bolster inlays essentially on it and a nice uh, milled pocket clip with some nice gold accenting to go along with it. All right, next up, we'll, we'll end with some, uh, some real fancier ones. And we'll start with the Riot T4000 from Tashi Barucha, which comes in about 400 bucks. And in any other circumstance, this would be about the biggest knife, biggest pocket knife you've probably ever seen, but it feels a little bit small on this table. Still though, it is a four inch blade M390 and we've got dual hollow grinds here. It's not double, uh, double edged. We don't have a sharpened edge here on the back. So keep that in mind, but otherwise you've got that really great dagger looking profile. The handles are titanium with natural micarta inlays on this particular one, but there are some, a few different options. And what's nice, the way they've done here is the handle construction. These aren't two sides with a gap in the middle closed by either a backspacer or some, uh, some standoffs. We've got a nice join on there. So it almost uh, mimics the look of an integral fl flipper, but you do have just a little bit of the seam right there and a really nice treatment overall. If they didn't do this, you wouldn't be able to get this cool kind of geometric look on the back. Also got a nice hidden lanyard point, milled titanium pocket clip, nice contouring overall on the handle. It feels pretty decently comfortable. And I love the way these guys fold up. It just has a really nice profile, kind of a nice elliptical shape with the way the blade nestles in right here. And I like the way that just that little bit of flipper tab sticks out on the back, ready to launch. All right, next up, last but not least, we'll end with Olamic Cutlery with one of their Midtech Soloist knives coming in uh, just under 700 bucks with a blade here, just over four inches with M390. We've got a lot of cool things going on here, a very refined design and a very nicely put together design too. Obviously that blade is very distinctive. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll call this a modified sheep's foot in this case. Flat grind with that broad swedge there on the back. And one of the cool things that they do on this guy, you've actually got a movable thumb stud. You can move it forward or back in the track here. You could take it out and just use the track itself for some thumb opening, or you can position that thumb stud exactly where you like it in order to get that blade open. Or you can take advantage of the ball bearings in the pivot and just flip it open. The handles are titanium and we've got a cool sculpted finish here that they're calling a uh, blue seabed rocks has a nice organic look to it. Kind of you know, very rocky in nature. The backspacer carries that texture through. We've got a nice gold color too. And what's neat is you have a little bit of an intentional gap on either side of this backspacer. They did make that a floating backspacer rather than having it flush mounted to either side. As far as usability, this is not just a piece of pocket jewelry, nice premium materials. You got a solid feel in the hand, excellent grip. It's another knife that is going to be able to really tackle some big jobs, just so long as you're not afraid of getting it scuffed. All right, that's all I've got for the video today. Make sure to let me know what you thought of my picks down in the comments. And of course you can leave your own suggestions for your favorite big bad flippers or folders. Doesn't have to be a flipper uh, down there as well. Uh, I will say one thing that I wish we could have had on the table, but I couldn't get my hands on one was one of the sheepdog XLs from Kaiser. So before you guys call me out, that should have been in here too. Uh, but that's it. Uh, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center, where you can also sign up for our Knife Rewards program. And I definitely recommend you do, because you'll earn some free money when you go to spend your money on one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.